Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we're going to take a look at not one, but two premium Kaisers in the same design, but slightly different offerings. And what we have here is the Kaiser October Titanium models that were recently released and have got my attention thoroughly. We have a very, very, very nice premium Kaiser here. And it's something that we haven't seen a whole lot of lately. I think Kaiser figured that they do such a phenomenal job on, you know, that sub $100 to $100 range that maybe they would just hang around there for a while. And that's what they've done. But as of recently, they've been kind of slowly trickling out some premium offerings of their designs that are selling well in the budget version. And I got to say, I like where they're going with this because this is a great model to do that with. We're going to hop into the overall view of this, but first let's take a look at some overall specs on these knives right here, and we'll just focus on this version right here. We have an overall length of 7 inches with a blade length coming in at 2.875 inches and a blade width at 1.25 inches. Blade thickness on this guy is surprisingly thicker than I thought, 140 thousandths with a blade material of CPM 20 CV, a fantastic steel, with a very unique sheep's foot blade style, a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 4.125 inches and a handle thickness at 540 thousandths. Handle width on this guy is right around 1.125 inches with a handle material, as I already mentioned, of titanium. Obviously, there's a lot going on with this titanium that we'll talk more about when we get to those handle and ergos. We have a lot of frame lock locking mechanism that has done extremely well. Uh, user of a right hand only tip up carry. Uh, weight coming in at 4.71 ounces. And I got to say for the size of this knife, it doesn't quite feel like 4.71 ounces because it is a slightly, I would say it's probably on the medium size of a knife, even though it has a shorter uh, overall blade. It's still it's definitely a hand filling knife and feels like more than a small knife, I guess the way, best way to put it. Uh, designed by Dmitry Osarenko and a price coming in at $174. And I'm going to say this right now, for $174, bucks, you are getting... You're getting a lot of premium features in this knife, and we're going to go over all those right after some size comparisons. And we'll use the satin version for the size comparisons, just because that satin blade sticks out a little better and may do us a little more justice for these size comparisons here. Uh, let's pull out, what do I have here? I have these two knives right here. I got knives all over the place as I'm uh, running through the list of some reviews here. But here we have the Spyderco Para 3. And we also have the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio. These are probably the two best knives I have in my collection to compare in terms of overall size. And then also um, from an ergonomical standpoint, they're not super similar in ergos, but as you can see, they all have those choils. They all kind of have that same curvature towards the top of the handle. So somewhat similar in ergos and all three of these knives have very nice ergos that are 100% good to go. Uh, one more knife that is really worth throwing into the size comparison uh, is this little guy right here, which is a fifth pocket knife, but this CRKT Pilar from, obviously th there's a little difference in size, of course, a significant difference in size, but this knife right here is very similar to the Pilarge, which is basically this model, just obviously bigger. It could be a lot closer in size, and that's what reminds me of this knife most. I just don't personally own one, but the Pilar is still worth throwing in there because the handle, the handle profile obviously isn't the same in size, but in terms of just profile and outline, you do start to see a lot of similarities there, and they both feel excellent in hand. So worth noting the Pilar in there as well. If you like the ergos of this little guy, imagine a bigger version, and you're getting really close with this October right here. Um, now let's get into uh, the review of these knives with good old Wayne Sharp World Fashion, starting with this blade. And it is, from the moment I saw this blade, it is just a super unique sheep's foot design. It's listed as a cleaver, but I'm going to call it a sheep's foot. I definitely get more sheep's foot vibes from this. And it just, in my opinion, performs a lot more, acts more like a sheep's foot. 
Um, we have a behind the edge reading of 18,000s, which is good to go. Usually anything under 20,000. You get into the teens of thousands, and for a normal EDC knife, you know, you're not going to have any issues there. Um, the only thing nicer than the uniqueness of this blade design in general are the features that tie into the ergos from the blade. And by that, I mean this jimping up here, this nice long place to rest your thumb with some very, very nice jimping that is extremely functional, nice and grippy in this choil down here. What I really like about this choil is... It's not a it's not a complete like half circle, so it doesn't force your finger to stay in one position. It gives you a lot of places for you to move your finger up and down that area without having too much of a feeling that hump too you know un unenjoyably. I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, but just very very smooth in this area. And now you also have that fuller and cut out here that work great, look great and just tie into the blade so, so well without affecting the cutting geometry too much since you still have a rather high flat grind. So a really nice blade design in general. And as you get down, the way the ergos tie the blade into this handle and the overall outline of the handle is just excellent. Let's take a look at the other version here as we talk about the handle. And one thing that's worth noting on these handles, as you can see, obviously one blade is black washed and one is satin, but there is a difference in the finish of these handles. It's kind of hard to see, but this is more of a blasted finish as to where this is more of a... Uh, it's kind of like a dark blast to a light blast, I guess, because I guess this does, yeah, this still is maybe like a vapor blast or something. It's a lighter, a lighter appearance. Um, so there is a kind of a duller, flatter look to the scales on this October compared to the satin version. So worth noting there might not, might be kind of hard to see on the camera, but you can kind of see it more up here around the pivot that there is a difference in overall color and appearance to the handles, even though they are also very similar. Um, but you get into these handles and first of all, we'll cover the aesthetics because they look great, but there's a lot more than aesthetics to this handle that is really worth knowing. Obviously, I love the brass collar pop. I think that looks excellent tied in with all the neutral colors. Um, it gives it a nice center of reference and it just helps the knife kind of explode from the center out and very nice. Now you see the milling on the outside, which is fantastic, by the way. Um, it adds for a great grip and milling in general on titanium. I just personally relate milling to premium, a premium knife because, you know, you can get titanium handles that are a little more on the affordable side that don't have this detail in the milling and it just looks great and it feels great. And it's an attractive design too. It's not like flowers or some things that kind of, like I see some milling in titanium that I just don't really personally gravitate to, but this is just a very nice attractive milling pattern um, that is just as functional as it is uh, aesthetically attractive. So very nice job on the milling there. Uh, very nice job with this frame lock. The access to this lock bar is perfect, and it has an excellent feel to it with all the beveling up there on the lock bar. Uh, very, very nice to just open up, break that lock, and close the blade. So really love what they did there. So you see the milling on the outside, but then you get on the inside, and that's where eh, it's kind of hard to show right now. There you go. You can kind of see it there. Um, all the milling on this guy. That's a, that's a great angle. Look in there and you can see, I mean, we're talking, we're talking kind of like Koenig Arius level of milling because the pockets are so big and so deep, take a lot of weight out of these scales. And you do have more up here. It's kind of harder to tell. Yeah, you can just see it. There is some milling on the upper side of this guy right here. There's some of the pocket there. Kind of hard to see. It's a lot easier to see. Um, the lighting is not perfect right now. I need to work on that. Um, but yeah, oh, there you go. Look at those pockets. Super, super deep milling pockets that really help relieve a lot of weight from the handle of this knife. And you notice that too. That's something that hits you really quick. And sometimes you have to be a little more of a longer tenured knife person, I guess, to notice this. But the balance in, from the overall handle to the blade, the balance is very even. It feels great in hand. You don't feel all the weight in your hand or all the weight in the blade. Um, very nice balance of weight on both of these knives. And uh, is something that, again, it's it, it's it's one of the, the finer things that you notice as you get more familiar with different knives. 
but uh, very nice balance in general. The only thing that I don't, I don't know if I change it yet. I don't know exactly what I do, but I don't know about this deep carry clip. Um, now it is a nice clip. I don't have any real issue with it from an ergonomic standpoint. Uh, and it does go obviously in and out of the pocket just fine. They did all the right things with it. They flattened the top of the ramp up there so it feels good in hand, good contact point. And a very important thing is the contact point is on the uh, not on the frame lock. It is on the actual handle so it doesn't put any pressure on the lock bar, which is nice. Um, and it gives you a place to rest your fingers when you're deploying this blade because that is another issue that we're going to go over here in just a second. Um, but I don't, I don't know. The only thing that I kind of think of is like, I feel like maybe a milled clip would look a little better, but I don't totally hate the way this looks because they did a good job of, again, the clip, it, it, it just, it doesn't look bad, but I just, I don't know. Knives like this, <sighs> I think I might prefer a milled clip, but again, I don't have a huge issue with this clip because it still kind of set works with the vibe of the knife. So let me know, what would you guys prefer on this? The clip that comes with it or would you prefer just kind of a flat milled clip that's not bent over? Always interested to hear your thoughts on something like that. But now going in to the other issue we have, that ties into the action. And it is more so with this knife or with the satin version than the black wash version. And I don't know, <sighs> I don't know. Actually, so there's two issues. Um, the first issue is purely with the satin version, and we'll talk about that right now. If you listen to when this blade kicks out, there's a slight little bit of a zip sound. Now, I will say I've already improved this a lot. It's gotten a lot better out of the box. It had a lot higher pitch. It, was, it sounded like I was zipping up a jacket, like a, a lot of zip. And what was happening, what's still happening, just not as bad as it was, um, is the detent ball... As you can see, the detent ball right, eh, right there, um, it's rubbing on the detent ball path on the inside of the knife, and there's either a burr or there's something there that is causing it to make that zip sound. So reached out to a buddy in the community, Jared Neves over at Neves Knives, and I said, hey, Jared, you know what this sound could be doing? Because I knew he also had one of these, so and uh, he's a great resource to reach out to because uh, the guy is just fantastic. Um, but he said, yeah, it's probably the detent ball rubbing on the track. He said, you know, break the, uh, pull the knife out or open the blade from the handle. I don't know why that was so hard to describe. <laughs> and, uh, just kind of put pressure on the lock bar and move it back and forth. Just keep moving it back and forth like this without landing in the detent ball hole or locking the blade open. So you want to kind of walk that fine line of not fully locking the blade out and go back and forth as much as you can while putting pressure on the lock bar and just do that back and forth. And what it will do is it will eventually wear in that detent ball trap to where it smooths out and it goes away. And so I did that for like the first half of the uh, Los Angeles Rams and Buffalo Bills game on Thursday night. And it did make a huge difference. So this action now is much smoother than it was out of the box. And the more you use this and carry it, the more it's going to smooth out. And I'm getting to the point to where now it's borderline buttery. It's getting very good. Doesn't have nearly as much of a sound. So really good tip there. Thanks again, Jared, for that tip. And I recommend anyone out there, if they're having that issue on not just this knife or any other knife, if you have that zip sound when you're deploying the blade, be sure to use that little trick because it does work very, very well. So that was a big issue with just this knife. Now there is one other issue I have with this that is more just in general. It's not just tied to one or the other, it's really to both of them. And that is the lock bar on this knife. Um, you have to be very careful about not putting too much pressure on it. Now that, that can be said for pretty much any frame lock knife, but it is very important with this one because there is something about if you put any pressure at all on this frame lock, it is next to impossible to flip that blade out. And it can really, it can really kind of wear on your finger because it is a nice flipper tab in terms of the jimping. It does catch your finger. Um, and if you're not putting pressure on the lock bar, the flipping action really is great on both of these. It's enjoyable, but you have got to be careful. You've got to keep your finger 
off that lock bar, any pressure on the lock bar, and it is very, very difficult to flip this blade out. And then if you put too much pressure on it, then you really tear your finger up on this flipper tab because it does have some nice jimping. But again, when the blade can't come out, you're just basically rubbing your finger on, on an aggressive surface. So you don't want to do that. You got to be very mindful to keep your fingers on the clip or off the lock bar. And like I said, you can say that for a lot of frame locks, but it is a lot more important with this Titanium October than it is some other frame lock knives. So had to throw that in there. I don't love that, but the one thing I will say to counter that is this knife for me, while the flipping action is really good and it is enjoyable, um, I really do love middle finger flicking this uh, because you have the nice cut out there and then you also have this fuller, which you can really depending on how skilled you are in middle finger flicking, <clears throat> excuse me, got something in my throat, um, but also how your nails are. And I'm kind of an idiot, so I wasn't thinking about, before I review this knife, I probably shouldn't chew on my middle fingernail because I need to use that to deploy the blade during the video, but I got to thinking about something, and when I get to think about something else, I don't really think in general, and I started chewing on my middle nail, and so now it's gone. So even with no nail, it's still pretty easy to middle finger flick, but you need a little more of a nail to get down to the fuller here. And I can probably, let's see if I can index. Yeah, you can still kind of, I use my ring finger on that. So it's still kind of easy to access. It'll just take a little more of a wrist to kick it out if you don't have a lot of a nail, but still very doable. But just the regular general middle finger flick is very nice on this knife. And I do kind of prefer this for me personally, because I love middle finger flicking knives. I do kind of prefer this a middle finger flicker first because it's just very enjoyable. But then of course, if you want to, you wanna use that flipper, it's good to go and it is a very enjoyable flipping action. Just don't put pressure on that lock bar and the blade flies out just fine. So overall good action, but there's things you need to be aware of with this titanium model. Um, overall though, at the end of the day, I I love this knife as much as I was hoping to. I said during the unboxing, I wanted to check this knife out for so long and I just, wasn't able to to get one on the channel and uh now i have and i am a big fan of this uh really really enjoy this design in general love the aesthetics love this milled titanium um and i gotta say though as much as i like this premium version i think i would also recommend the budget version just as much because those are liner locks so you wouldn't have to worry about the pressure of the frame lock giving you trouble to flip the blade. So um, yeah, if you don't wanna spend quite as much on the premium version, the budget versions are just as recommendable for me because you're still gonna have that nice slicey blade. You're still gonna have probably, I think, oh no, even the even the micarta version still come in CPM 20 CV. Uh, I believe those are 129. Now these premium versions, like I said, they're 174. So there's a significant difference there. So you could save a little money, get a liner lock version that may be slightly more enjoyable from a flipping standpoint um, and still have that premium steel. So good options, whether you want the premium version or the budget version, whichever one you go with, the Kaiser October is a very good option in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think of this design. Let me know if you've handled one. Really hope you guys enjoyed this review. Hope you have a great rest of your day and until the next one, I'm out.